Well, welcome to St. Vincent Ferrer Church, which if you're watching this is probably one of the churches of your parish. And uh, as you may know, I'm Father Walter Wagner. I'm the pastor of this parish, and that's a great joy for me. And I'm here with Brother Hyacinth Grubb. And we're preparing some presentations to, to enable people to enter more deeply into the mysteries of Holy Week. Now, one of the essentials for that is fulfillment. The New Testament goes out of its way to present Christ as the fulfillment of what had been prophesied in the Hebrew scriptures and foreshadowed in Jewish religious practice. And the ancient Christians are thrilled to recognize Jesus in this light as the fulfillment of prophecy and law and cult. And what's necessary for us is to look at this truth, the way that Jesus is presented in the Gospels, and recognize what the ancients recognized, which is that the purpose of God is unfolding constantly in history. At the Easter Vigil, we say that all the ages belong to Christ. And so what we celebrate in Holy Week is a focal point to which the whole life of Israel was tending over the course of centuries. One of the joys of being able to celebrate Holy Week here at St. Vincent Ferrer is that the architects and the designers, and artists who, who, who created this church had this in mind. And so in a variety of ways, they present the gift of fulfillment that we see in the New Testament. So today, I'd like to look with you at, at ways in which we can enter into the Mass of the Lord's Supper by recognizing with our eyes some of the sources by which we understand the mystery of the Eucharist. And we're going to see that very clearly in the left door of the tabernacle. The tabernacle has, the tabernacle doors have 12 lozenges on them, 12 panels, and they're all executed in cloisonne, cloisonne enamel work. So the six on the left door are all instances of the Old Testament which were understood by the ancient church and by us to provide sources for understanding the mystery of the Eucharist. So without further ado, Brother Hyacinth and I are going are to walk up to the high altar and begin to look at some of these enamels. Okay. So the first thing that we can say as we move is that a ta what is a tabernacle? The first thing to say is a tabernacle is a tent. That's what it means. And you may remember from the book of Exodus that God journeyed with his people from slavery to the promised land. And in that journey, he, his presence, his presence was found in a tent. And we understand that Jesus in his incarnation pitched his tent with us and walked with the human race through all of its vicissitudes and joys, except sin. And now we understand that he continues to tabernacle among us, dwelling in a tent. That is where we reserve the Blessed Eucharist. The fact that, that God dwells so close with his people makes it easier to grasp how the happenings 
of the ancient Hebrew scriptures are actually revealing something of his plan. So let's draw closer. You have here these six, and, and they're really six gorgeous enamel plaques or the panels in the door. The color is, is, is lush. The detail is fantastic. And in, in these beautiful gem-like ways, these six images are icons for the priest to look at while he celebrates Mass. And really, it was the priest alone who, who saw them up close. Now, the first of the images in time is right here on the upper left, and it is the sacrifice of Abel. Now, you'll remember that Abel sacrificed livestock. There's the altar, there's the sheep, one there, one on the altar. And Abel's sacrifice found favor with God, as opposed to that of Cain, which was... Um, cereal offerings and did not find favor. Now we need to draw something from that, which is that Abel offered his best. Abel offered the fruit of his labor, the fruit of his love to God. So when you see sacrifice like this, what you're seeing is a response. You're seeing a creature, a human being, who has received life from God, who is sustained by life in God, who has been given the capacity to receive God's gifts of creation and also to work with them. So Abel receives from God's plenty not only the gift of, of animal life, but the gift of being able to raise it and husband it and use it, all of its gifts. And that Receiving and working with are the fundaments of grateful worship in the presence of God. And every Eucharist has that quality. As we say in the Mass, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the gifts we offer you. We say about the Eucharist, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Well, Abel could have said something like that about his sheep. And the offering is, first of all, an act of thanksgiving, that if God providing the sheep and the ability to raise it, but also an act of confidence. I'm surrendering this sheep. I'm taking no profit from it because I trust that the God who provided this will continue to provide. Now we go down one, and we come here to another incident from the book of Genesis, where Abram meets Melchizedek, the priest of Salem, and offers him bread and wine and a tenth of everything that he had won in battle. The offering of bread and wine is, of course, significant for us, not just because it establishes a historical pattern, but because it's a sign here in the book of Genesis that bread and wine suffice to represent all of God's gifts, all the gifts we receive from his plenty, all the gifts we are privileged to work with using our hands and our minds and our imaginations. And so in the Mass, in the Mass, we recognize that the host and the wine put on the altar at the presentation of the gifts represent all of our gifts, all of the, the, the things we have received in, in God's gift of creation, all the things we have received in terms of our own, our own bodily life, our talent and our temperaments, the gifts we have received in being able to do the work that we do and sustain the relationships we sustain. And all of that is part of the offering. All of that is there represented in that host 
and wine. And so the, 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 this exchange with God established by Christ in the Eucharist is seen as having a root in this encounter with Melchizedek. And that's what we, why we say about Christ, he is a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And we attribute that, that, that status in some way to everyone who is ordained who presents bread and wine before God. Then down here, we have a third powerful, difficult to grasp image, which is Abraham offering his son, Isaac, on an altar to God. There's Isaac, there's Abraham, and there is the angel telling him to stop and not make the offering. And over there, right here, is the, the ram caught in the thicket who is offered instead. Now, the, the, this is another scene from, from Genesis. It's a very difficult one to comprehend. But what Abraham is doing here in offering his son is recognizing that, that the son came to him as a gift. Isaac came to him as a gift, one born late in life to both Abraham, who was old, and Sarah, who had been barren. And so in, in obeying God's call to offer him, Abraham is actually giving back to God what already belongs to him. And so this very difficult looking situation of a man offering his son on an altar is actually an offering of thanksgiving and trust, just as we saw here in the offering of Abel. And so it's clear from God's response, stop, don't offer the child, offer the ram, that God wanted not the, son, not the life of the child, but the obedience and the gratitude that lay behind it. And so this is also given to us as a, as a source for understanding the Eucharist. First, because in Holy Week, we recognize that the Father, God the Father, unlike the Father Abraham, offered his son and did not spare him. There was no angel to stop the crucifixion, and there was no ram offered in place of. So God did not spare his own son, and the sacrifice of, um, of Christ deemed acceptable by the Father is a foundation for our Eucharistic worship. But also, so is the realization of Abraham that everything that we have and we are is, a, is not a possession, but a stewardship. And so part of what we do in, in the response of worship in the response of the practice of justice and the practice of charity in daily life is render to God what is already his and to recognize ourselves primarily as stewards and not as possessors in this life. So these three scenes really give you together a powerful sense of how human beings respond to God in a way that is dignified and, and engaged and, and is um, profoundly dynamic. Because when we offer to God what is his, he gives it back. He loved the sacrifice of Abel. He blessed Abram with countless descendants. He did the same thing here in the offering of Isaac. He gave Isaac back, laden with the promise of limitless descendants. So every time we come to Mass, we're invited to have that same gratitude and that same trust. Thank you so much.